Hi guys and girls, AJ here and today we are going to be talking about the new iPhone coming this year. So the iPhone 13 was going to be 12 S's. Who knows? But let's check out the rumours. So, hi, so one of the first things is going to be the screen. So the screen as far as we know, um, the notch is going to be the same. Now, the reason for that is, is because we know, or we feel we know, 80% that the facial, facial recognition is going to be pretty much still there. Um, but rumour has it as well that they're going to use the lovely jubbly fingerprinting. So, last time we had fingerprint, um, before the button on the recent iPads was the button for um, the four, the five, the six, the seven, the eight um, iPhones, families. But now they've got rid of that. That was the hardest bit of security to hack into. I don't think anyone could. And then they've gone for facial recognition. Again, very hard to do. And I don't know if anyone has hacked into that. Um, but now there's lots of patents that Apple have done to have under screen fingerprint reader. Now we know that they're not brilliant. Um, and also as well, I think with the new iPad that's out, that's got that fingerprint reader, I don't think that's a great idea because I've heard quite a few people say that they have problems with that reading the finger. Um, so because it's such a tiny little space, for you to read rather than a, a big thumbprint or finger it's a little line um, and I don't think that's super good uh, but we'll see what happens with that little rumor there but the screen is going to pretty much be the same it's going to have 120 uh, megahertz which again is really good um, whether it's going to be on all models we don't know um, probably definitely will be more likely um, the Pro models, whether the Mini and the 13, we're calling them for 13s for now, actually get that. Um, but maybe it's a feature that they want to have with their premium versions than anything else. Um, also, though, there's going to be a bit of a difference with the Wi Fi 6E. Now, if you've not heard of that before, 6E basically means that. There's no sort of congestion, less congestion maybe, um, with overlapping of the channels. So it'd be a better, it'd be six gigahertz. So it's a bit more higher than Wi-Fi 6. Wi-Fi 6 is brilliant, but Wi-Fi 6E is even more. So not that far off really from 5G. So if you could have your home broadband just as quick as 5G, that would be really good. Um, but then in the end, would you, depending on what sort of data plan you're on, would you want to, you know, have Wi-Fi if you've got 5G? You know, at the moment, lots of them out there, these companies are saying unlimited, um, you know, and, and that, but or 50 gig or 90 gig. But then you're paying so much money at the moment for these Apple phones. And in my area, um, there's only one company that does 5G and I'm not with them. So, you know, I've had some bad experiences with them um, and they're not very, very good, the, the speed rate. So if you're paying for 5G, why not, why not get the best? So they're obviously not using the right bandwidth um, for the area. Uh, the other thing as well is the battery. So the A15 chip at the moment, the A14 chip is really pretty damn good considering the battery sizes are smaller but battery life isn't that much different from the iPhone 11s and 11 Pro Max. Um, so I think with that, putting that into place, if they did then increase the battery size back to what is in the 11 Pro Max um, with the A15 chip, if it's just as efficient as the 14 chip, um, then obviously you're gonna get an increase in battery life more than the 11 Pro Max, which would be good. And that's what Apple need to do. Fast charging um, through Qi, again, is that 
something that Apple are going to be interested in speeding up a bit more, allowing you to have even more speed in your the Qi side of things. At the moment, it's up to 15 watts now, which is pretty good. They hadn't, you know, we've been on 10 watts for ages when it goes into plug-in. It's only recently with the iPhone 11, they've increased that. So for them to go from iPhone 11 with extremely slow charging for Qi or QI, and now they've gone to 15 in the next phone, you know, Apple are going somewhere, which then comes on to my next point of no port. So no charge port, so it's good for wireless charging. Um, at the moment, like I say, 15 watts is still not up there with the other competition. You know, we're now Qi charging at, you know, over 20, 30, 40. Um, but then again, depending what battery they're using, how long lasting is the battery going to be? Is it going to degrade quite quickly compared to what iPhones do at the moment? When you plug in at the bottom, they degrade quicker than using Qi. But it all depends on the speed of the input through Qi. So it's all right then getting that technology in there to get faster charging, but is it going to downgrade the battery sooner? You know, who knows? Um, only they do. But I have noticed that Apple's phones, and I think it's Samsung phones, use different battery types. So whether the battery tech in the Samsung ones degrade later in life compared to Apple's ones, then maybe if that's the case, Apple should then maybe go to the Samsung side of things. I mean, you know, let's be honest, most parts are done from other companies like Sony and uh, Samsung anyway for Apple. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Hopefully more and more parts for the next phone will be more in-house rather than out-house, which would be good because we know the quality of Apple is very, very good indeed. Um, also, yes, so the Bionic chip for the A15 would be five nanometers, which doesn't mean a lot to everybody, but it just means it's taking up less space, but packing more for its size, which is which is crucial. Um, and the same with having no port, where you've got no port, that takes up a bit of space inside. If you took a phone apart, you'd see, which then means you could have perhaps a, back, a better speaker system at the bottom of the phone, or expand the mic a little bit more so they can hear you even clearer or maybe be able to fit in something with a tag reversed charging so they can maybe fit that in there so you could reverse charge your earpod pros or maybe you know another phone which i don't know why you would do that um because that certainly would take a lot longer you know we're far away from the technology where you could put two phones together back to back and the other one would supercharge the other one. I mean, that would be amazing. Um, you know, Wi-Fi charging is not quite there yet, or Qi charging is not quite there yet. Um, but that's something that I'm sure they've patented some sort of idea like that. Um, but also the screen as well. The screen is going to get even tougher. Some sort of diamond technology they're going to use apparently. Um, better than the one they have done so far. So it's gonna be even more harder to crack. And apparently the new 12s at the moment, their screens are pretty good compared to the 11s and the, the other phones. So we'll see on that one. They always keep changing the, the strength. Um, you know, if people didn't drop their phones, it wouldn't matter what the screen is made out of really. I don't think I've really cracked many screens in my time. Um, because I put screen protector on and bumper cases. So I always protect my phone so they keep a good value when it comes to resale. Um, but I think that's it. iOS 15, who knows? I think widgets will need to get in better. They need to improve. Um, I think they need to open the floodgates more for more personalised customization. I think the clock, the timing clock there that's on the uh, iPhones are getting really outdated now. That needs an upgrade. Um, yeah, you know, things need upgrading certainly for the, the home screen. Okay, we have the library now and stuff like that, but I, I just don't think it's it's good enough. And um, I think, you know, the shape of the buttons maybe need changing or something like that, just to sort of bring it more of a 
a 2021 feel to it. So iOS obviously is going to have tags as well. There's been an update out, which I updated yesterday um, for developers account. And apparently there's a something there in the writing about tags, hair tags. So that's something that we don't know too much about, but we do know that they are coming shortly. Um, more than likely this year, later this year. I don't think there's going to be a huge announcement about it. Um, but it may do, who knows, uh, but we'll see about that. But let me see if there's any more of my notes here. No, that's it. I think I've covered everything so far. But like I say, with the naming of the phones, are they going to be called 12 S's? Because I don't think Apple somehow are going to change the design. But I think they need to go to 13 now. Just to carry on now, like with, a, with some of the other phone companies, um, move along a bit swiftly and catch up to where they should be with their numbers. Um, also, actually, uh, Apple Watch. Now, a new Apple Watch is intimate, I'm sure. Um, and that rumour has it, um, it's going to possibly have the edges just like the new iPhone 12s. So if that's the case, that would be good, that would be different quite stylish I've shown that around to some people that design and a lot of people do prefer it or like it or if they said oh, if they could have a choice of two watches they buy both so we shall see and we'll also see what color as well they're coming out with because I've seen some people out there that are designing what they say the iPhone 13 will look like but they've come out with a copper gold effect and that looks really nice and I think you know the colors that have come out recently with the pros they don't look premium enough in those colours and I think, well the gold one does, but I think they need to bring out something more like a copper or maybe a black with gold as well because that would look really, really neat. Anyway guys and girls, thanks for watching and I'll speak to you real soon. Bye bye.